Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Yash1094 in a 5 plus 5 game on chess.com. It's another climbing the rating ladder video. Let's go. Been a little while since one of these. Hopefully my opponent's there, and we have liftoff in the Sicilian. Let's play the C3 Sicilian, also known as the Alapin variation. We're trying to build this big center with D4. I recommend this line quite frequently to my own students, especially in this rating range. I'd say, you know sub 1000 to 1600 it's even good beyond that it's one of the major sicilian lines but i like the fact that very often black will allow you to set up this pawn duo in the center so black played knight c6 on move two and already i like this position for white so e6 i can consider playing d5 and i think i will avail myself of that opportunity because if i pause and play a move like knight c3 that gives black a chance to play d5 and maybe minimize the space disadvantage. So let's go ahead and do this. Now, there is a bit of a, a trap here. If black takes and I get to recapture and then black plays knight c to e7, you might wanna pause your video and try to figure out the idea at that point, but I would play d6 and black would end up losing a piece because my queen would be coming to e2. So black plays knight e5, probably a better decision. And let's see, f4, if I really wanna go all out to attack that knight, but I'm just going to develop now. Let's bring a piece into the game. I won't develop my king side quite yet. Yeah, bishop b4. One move that catches my eye here is queen d4. Hitting the knight and the bishop. It's perhaps a little unconventional. You know, you guys are used to seeing me bring my queen out early in the Scandinavian, but it may look a little odd to do it here. I kind of like it, though, because... If I can induce black to play, let's say bishop takes c3, I'm going to have the bishop pair. I'm not taking on e6 because I think black can take back with the f pawn and it's okay for black. So my opponent does take on c3. Now, pawn takes or queen takes, kind of leaning towards pawn takes, to be honest, because I might want this bishop to come to a3. That's one thing that looks appealing to me. Queen takes is probably also good, though. Let's let's not dwell over too much. I'm just going to play pawn takes. Trust our instinct here. Okay, so I got the bishop pair. And in particular, because I have the dark square bishop and black does not, I'm going to be looking for opportunities on the dark squares. I mentioned this move. Maybe f4 followed by queen takes g7 is an idea. Let's just see how black plays at this moment, because this may determine a lot. Hope you guys are all doing well. By the way, it's super cold here in Minnesota. Mm, and I think this might lose material. Maybe not. I was thinking d6 at first, but there is queen a5 to defend the knight. Okay. So I'm again looking at my f4 move. I know I haven't developed my pieces so much right now, but f4 will hit the knight again. And just scanning the board for active things that black could do to try to punish me i don't see a whole lot i mean i'm gonna go after this pawn i do have to be mindful of this guy though so f4 is for sure a consideration also bishop f4 uh, maybe bishop a3 again the d6 move i'm kind of discarding it because of this yeah i think i'm gonna play f4 straight away could also play d6, queen a5, and then f4, but let's just see what black does against this. And I don't mean to be lazy when I say that. Like, let's just see. Some of you guys have mentioned that before, that a lot of times I and you know other masters may say something like that. And I do understand when we, when we uh, kind of hedge our predictions in that way that it might look like we're deferring to our instincts. But in these, these type of time control games, you often just have to go with a decent looking decision. This is a rather fast game. So yeah, let's go ahead and take this pawn down here. My queen is still defending. Now, if black plays e5, I'm gonna play bishop d2, more, more than likely. They can take on f4 at that point, but I still like my chances. Ooh, knight takes f4, though. I think that's going to miss the mark, because unless I'm mistaken here, I can take the rook. Again, the queen is staying defending this pawn long range. 
Before I play that, though, I'm just scanning, trying to make sure that I'm not missing anything here, because, okay, my opponent resigned <laughs> as I was scanning. Uh, why don't we send him a rematch? Let's see if he'll play again. And he will. Okay. So game number two here. We get a little double header. D4, let's play knight f6 in this game. Maybe I will opt for a Nimzo Indian. How about that? Yeah, I was going to take on h8 in that position and wasn't looking too hot for black. That being said, and we'll take a quick peek at it afterwards, but I think I think if black had played e5, the position was still, or sorry, um, yeah, e5 and then maybe taken on f4 after I played bishop d2. The, the position was still up in the air. Okay, bishop g5. Hmm. Not the most common move. I could give a check on b4. I could play h6. Let's play h6 and see if he'll capture my knight. If I can get that dark square bishop again, I'll be fairly happy. Okay, so he plays bishop h4. He's keeping the pin. Now, let's throw in this check because if white blocks with the knight on d2... That may open the floodgates for a possible pin against that knight. I can play g5, bishop g3, knight e4. And I've seen this trap before, but then knight f3 to defend the knight on, on d2 will run into a certain move of mine. Again, maybe you can pause your video if you want to visualize that and try to predict what I'm going for here. This may not happen. He may play something like knight c3. But the move I have in mind is g4 at that point. Okay, so he does play knight c3. I think that is better. Even still, I might play g5, bishop g3, knight e4, and expand. Or c5. c5 is also compelling here to try to get my queen out to a5, let's say. Hmm. Yeah, I don't have a ton of experience in this type of position, to be honest. I'm going to go for uh, c5. I'm not a native Nimzo Indian, Queens Indian player, so I'm sort of feeling my way through here. I have a feeling g5 was also okay. But yeah, brutally cold here in Minnesota. It's going to be right around zero degrees for the next two weeks. So I'm making some content. <laughs> I've been very active on Twitch lately, by the way. Uh, not as much on YouTube, but on Twitch, I've been streaming quite frequently. Okay, uh, queen a5. We're taking on d4. Also, bishop takes c3. A lot of options. Queen a5, there's knight e2. Maybe there's not a whole lot to worry about for my opponent there. Let's play knight c6. We'll develop the knight behind the c-pawn, apply more pressure to the center. Okay, now a3 is played. I'm going to take. And we're saddling white with the double isolated pawns. Those pawns could be weaknesses, right? So I am going to try to target them. I'm liking this queen a5 move directly, so let's go for it. I break the pin on my knight, so nothing to worry about there. And if bishop takes f6, I'm taking on c3 with check in between move before recapturing. Okay, so my opponent takes, uh, sorry, knight e2. Now I could, take here, I could take here on d4. I could also play g5 again and then knight e4. A lot of options. I could play knight e4 without g5. Although I think they'll play queen c2. Hmm. Feels like it's time for g5. Let's do it. I'm going to play knight e4 after my opponent plays bishop g3. And possibly support the knight with f5. We'll see. See how white reacts. I think white should play queen c2 here. Or queen d3 perhaps. But let's see what happens. I could also go for d5. If I want to support the knight, maybe clear up some of the congestion in the center. But I'm thinking f5 is more promising. Looks a little more cramping. Maybe I'll develop my light square bishop. 
like b6, bishop a6, that is an option to target c4. Okay, so I've established the inverted bathtub pawn structure here. <laughs> Interesting position. By the way, at some point, I will climb the rating ladder on Lee Chess. I know some of you have been asking about that, and I've always played this type of video, this series on chess.com, but I will at some stage do it on Lee Chess too. I think that'd be a lot of fun. So let's take, get rid of that bishop. Now again, knight takes is gonna run into this, and my opponent will lose a pawn. So I think white did have to take with the H pawn there. I wasn't quite sure how white was gonna unwind in that position, but. Yeah, that was better, because now they're going to run into this pin. There's no knight on e2 protecting. So interestingly, in this pair of games against Yash, the, the pawn play has been perhaps you could call the difference maker, because in both cases, the first game in the Alapin, I was able to push my opponent around with my pawns. They were a bit extended with their minor pieces, here too, that early bishop g5, that can get hit by h6 and g5. Also, I was even targeting c3. And of course, there's a ways to go in this game. Not saying I'm going to win immediately or anything, but that's maybe something my opponent can think about. The interaction between the pieces and the pawns. Yeah, White's debating what to do. Tough situation. If I were playing white here, I guess I would, yeah, I guess I would take, but where to put the queen now? Because queen d2 runs into knight b3 with the fork. Queen d1 drops this, so I guess either this or this is what we're looking at. If white can limit the damage to a single pawn and, and get castled as well, I think they'll still be in the game, but they still got to be accurate. Now I've expanded pretty pretty aggressively over here, so I, I can't be too casual with my own king safety, but because there isn't a dark square bishop to worry about, and white doesn't have great development, also there's no pawn tension, I think we're in the clear, and I probably would still castle short. Okay, queen d2, this runs into the fork. But I'm just pausing, I'm thinking if I wanna insert a move like that maybe first. Don't see like a real need to do so. I'm also seeing if I play this, if there's some way he can counterattack. Because, for example, my rook on h8 is undefended. But queen d4 trying to target that would run into knight takes d4. So let's go ahead and do this. Queen d6 also looks a little menacing, but it's just not going to fly. I can take here or take there with check first if I want, and then pick up the rook. There's not enough pieces around my king for uh, white to land anything here. Yep, queen to b2. Again, I'm briefly considering that. Probably unnecessary, so let's take. And when white takes back, maybe I'll continue my development. b6, bishop here. I'm thinking about parking the queen on c5. That looks productive. So then I can even stop my opponent from castling. So, yeah, let's do this. And if bishop here, we'll do that. Prevent the castling operation. Go bishop a6. Maybe castle queen side. And going this direction is not out of the question either. Maybe I even would have done it had uh, white not blundered. I also could have played bishop a6 on the previous move instead of queen c5 with the idea of bishop takes c4 if white castles and then queen c5 check. But... It seems nicer to prevent them from castling altogether because I think this is going to be weak for the foreseeable future. So there's no, there's no hurry to win it. Shout out to all my viewers from India, by the way. I really appreciate you guys. So we're playing an Indian opponent here. And they love and appreciate chess a lot in India. So shout out to you guys. I know for some of you Indian viewers, I don't stream at uh, times that are conducive to you guys watching a lot of times. 
But trust me, I do appreciate you, and thanks a lot for watching, along with everyone else, too. I know there's a ton of content out there these days, a lot of streamers you can watch. So I always appreciate it when you guys uh, devote some of your, your time in a day to watching my videos. And I hope it's improving your chess. That's what I'm going for. Okay, 92. So this was a creative maneuver to defend that pawn. Now, maybe here... Queen e3 also looks interesting, although I don't think it accomplishes much. You can play a move like that. Could also just castle. Yeah, maybe I'll castle. We'll get the rooks connected. Then I think a future d5 type move is going to have a little more impact with the rook behind. I think my opponent's not going to make it on the clock. Okay. So thanks to Yash for the pair of games. Just telling him I'm going to uh, post these on YouTube. I do message all my opponents afterwards and just let them know. Again, this is an educational series. We're not trying to flex on anyone. This is uh, an opportunity for all of us to get better, including myself, because I find mistakes that I make in these in these games too. So let's, um, let's talk about this one briefly, and then I'll go back through the Alapin game for a second as well. So I was ready to play the Nimzo Indian, knight c3, bishop b4, or possibly a queen's Indian. Knight f3 is, in fact, the most popular move here at master level. I was probably going to play b6, but th this has a lot of flexibility, this setup. So, for example, after knight f3, black can also play d5 and go into a Queen's Gambit Declined, or maybe even a Semi-Slav in the future. Uh, you can go for a Benoni if you want to play c5. Same thing after Knight c3, by the way. Uh, Queen's Indian would be b6 here. Just a lot of possible, possible setups. But my opponent played Bishop g5, and I do wonder... Now let me click over to the analysis board. I do wonder... If we look at the opening explorer, what black's most popular reply is to this. Yeah, and it is h6. It's what I played. And I wouldn't mind the trade. I'd be happy to get the bishop pair, even if white expanded in the center. I think these pawns might be a little far flung. Black can play check or, yeah, d6, maybe with e5 in mind. For the bishop pair like this, we're willing to let white establish a bunch of central territory. But my opponent played bishop h4. Yeah, I went check. So we're following quite a few games still. Now, knight d2, it's been played 44 times in the Masters database. Yeah, and I was mentioning this line. I do wonder how this works out. Knight e4. So we've chased the bishop, and now there's a double attack here. Knight f3. And I was speculating that I thought g4 was decent. But I'm going to guess... Ah, okay, g4 probably runs into a3. There's one game here. Yeah, a3 is an important resource by white. Otherwise, they would have trouble on d2. This is the line I was encouraging you guys to look at. Because if the knight moves, well, splat. We pick up the piece and the queen in the process. Oh, shout out to Yasser Sirwan. This is the Sirwan attack, I guess. Bishop g5. Hmm. Okay, so this is an awfully flexible position if this were to occur. A lot of moves played here. Knight c6, h5, chasing the bishop. This is, if you're going to develop the bishop to g5 in this setup as white, you do have to watch out for this operation. Black chasing you, h6, g5, knight e4, maybe f5 or h5 to come. Trying to go after this bishop. Okay, but my opponent played knight c3, which I probably would have played myself. Still sticking with the opening explorer. Okay, so we're following some games now still. I played c5 because white's queen side does seem a bit more vulnerable with the bishop over here. And opening up for queen a5 is kind of nice. Yeah, d5 is often played. And this is a transposition to the Leningrad variation, which could come about via... This is, again, how openings can kind of mix in and out of one another. But this would be a possible transposition. h6, we get to the same setup via knight c3 on move 3. Hmm. Yeah, and do always take a peek at the opening explorer, by the way, if you have access to it on chess.com or Lee Chess. Uh, Lee Chess, for sure you will, if you're analyzing your games. Chess.com, it might be for premium members only or limited after a certain amount of moves. I'm not sure. 
but it's good to take a peek at it just to kind of get a lay the lay of the land as far as the theory goes okay yeah again a lot of moves played here i don't know if there's a single best move in this position castles queen a5 i kind of like tonight c6 um it didn't see anything majorly wrong with it maybe white can go for d5 i don't know but I wouldn't have minded putting my knight on e5 either before or after a trade. I think that's okay. Just turn on the engine for a second. I'm curious what it says here. It likes taking and then knight c6. Interesting. Okay. It says this is fine too, though. Okay. Yeah, I think this evaluation is not great enough that uh, we're going to read into it too much this early. Yeah, now my opponent played a3. I somehow didn't like that. Thought maybe white should catch up in development, like knight ge2, reinforce. Because when white plays a3, a lot of times black wants to capture on c3 and double up those pawns and play against those pawns. It's something that black will often uh, welcome. So with white playing a3, almost trying to force it, I didn't mind it. So a3 takes... Any merit in playing bishop a5 or taking on d4? Uh, taking on c3 is probably good. Okay, take, take. Queen a5. This looked consistent to me. Yeah, knight here. And now I embarked on this operation. Let's see if the computer likes that. I was pretty satisfied with it. Hmm, wants to go knight e4 immediately. Black's doing pretty well. Also b6. Yeah, b6, bishop a6. That would be a nice plan too. I just wasn't sure if I should allow bishop takes f6, and I was willing to weaken my king side ever so slightly to do this. Hmm. Yeah, seems like white's doing fine here, though. f5. Ah, okay, d5 now. d5 in the engine actually likes white's position by quite a bit. So that disrupts this pawn chain. If take, take, knight e7, d6, wow. And is the bishop gonna make an appearance here? Probably not, right? Wow, I'm just shocked by this evaluation. Knight takes, okay, I guess without the pawn on e6, this pawn on f5 starts to become extremely weak. Interesting. So maybe that's why the computer was insisting I should take once at least. A little earlier. I'll have to keep that in mind. That's that's one thing I picked up from this game. Okay, so got to be a little more cautious about going h6, g5, knight e4 in this type of structure. I mean, it look, visually, this looks pretty dominating for black. But yeah, I can see how d5, trying to change the structural landscape, will affect things. I guess knight e7 might be better, trying to keep the tension here. And d6, or even h4, fighting back. Okay, some hand-to-hand -hand combat going on. The next couple moves were critical, though, because on f3, knight takes g3, white must take with the h-pawn. That is pretty clear, because this knight, for the moment, needs to remain glued to defending d4. You guys saw what happened in the game. On h takes g3, yeah, a lot of stuff could happen here. I mean, I would probably lean towards playing b6 or maybe d6. Engine likes d6 and knight e7. I'd say this this plan, b6, bishop here, castles, look, looks pretty good to me as well. Although the engine somewhat likes white. It's even suggesting a move like g4. Again, trying to maybe land something like this. So the pawn play is playing a huge role here, but first and foremost, white must keep their structure together, and they must deal with the pressure on d4 and c3. And unfortunately, Yash failed to do that. Took with the knight, and now... I was gathering this pawn, and this position is awesome for black. Because not only is it a pawn, but also I'm pretty active. Knight takes d4. And here, white simply must play queen b2 or queen d3. Yeah, top two moves. Let's just take queen d3 as an example. I can play the knight back to c6. Or queen e5 check. And knight c6 looks pretty reasonable. White's a couple moves away from castling kingside. Just not great for them. Let's say bishop e2, yeah, maybe b6, or even queen c5 looks pretty good. Once again, stop them from castling. 
H4 possible. Mm, yeah, H4. Going for some sort of disruption on the king side. Yeah, this is the type of position where if white doesn't do something drastic, they're just going to get ground down. So I like the spirit of that move. But largely the damage has already been done, unfortunately, because of knight takes g3 on move 13. Yeah, and this walked into the fork. And this was really too much from here. Just trying to be cautious. Always alert, right? Castles. Also thought about queen e3 or even d5, but I figured, why rush? Let's just connect the rooks. And our opponent resigned. Okay, so some considerations there with the pawn structure. In general, I would not recommend, like if you're playing d4 and you get the white side of these positions, I would not recommend taking on this structure if you're unfamiliar with it because the double pawns is tough. And a player on the black side of this setup can really make your life miserable if they know what they're doing. And if you do find yourself in that situation, I would say look for a way to change the structure. Like that d5 move the engine was suggesting here, that's an instructive one. Trying to disturb me over here. Okay, and now a brief look at that Alapin game, the first game, before we wrap up. Yeah, I like this line a lot. Theoretically, it's not considered as strong as the open Sicilian, which is knight f3 followed by d4. Most of the mainline games at the top level that you see in the Sicilian revolve around that. But there's a lot to be said for the Alapin, guys. It's fundamental. We're trying to play d4 with the support of the C-pawn. It's very similar to what I've often recommended to you guys on the white side in the Italian game playing c3 followed by d4 because a lot of your opponents are just going to let you establish these pawns here and yes there is theory there are ways for black to fight back but if you get positions like that you're gonna have good results i'm pretty confident so the two best moves here for black after c3 are knight f6 and d5 uh, d5 in particular this is what i would typically opt for as black this is a Scandinavian with the moves c3 and c5 thrown in. And I'm sorry to tell you this, Team Scandi, but <laughs> uh, I got to say, this is just an improved version of the Scandinavian because white's knight cannot reach c3 easily, so black's queen is even more comfortable on d5 than usual. But it's playable, and we're going to advance d4. Even if white takes on an isolated pawn, white often gets activity here. Knight c3 can happen if black takes on d4 too early. There's theory here, do take a look at it, but um, for the most part, if you're playing C3 at, let's say, the sub-1600 level, you're going to get a lot of games where you just get to play D4. They're going to play Knight C6, D6, E6, maybe G6, and they'll, they will let you play D4. Sometimes they might play E5 in an effort to stop you from playing D4, but that's pretty nice too. You can even try to go for a superior version of the open Sicilian, uh, maybe bishop c4 if you want to control this diagonal and occupy the d5 square, really overprotect that. So I got to be careful because I'm not, I'm not saying we should play this simply hoping that we get d4 in, but I'm saying this is a main line where you should know what to do against d5 or knight f6, whereupon we're playing like this, and I have games on my channel like this. But very often, black will play suboptimally here already on move two, which if you go for the open Sicilian, a lot of times people know their theory here and they can take you 10, 10 moves or more in and they'll still be in their book. Everyone kind of has their pet line in the Sicilian that they play as black. So yeah, my opponent played knight c6 and already after d4 in this trade, I think white's doing pretty well. Uh, black could play d5 and try to fight back, but I wouldn't have minded this. I think I would have played bishop e3 here followed by knight c3. Pretty sure this has been played before too. Yeah, bishop e3 or even knight f3, I guess, is better. I'll have to remember that. White scores pretty well here. Hand-to-hand -hand combat in the center. Oh, yeah, okay, I remember this line. Yeah, white gets the two bishops. Yeah, white can even play knight c3 here, I guess. Okay. But as played, black played e6, and I decided to advance in the center. I wonder... Okay, so knight f3 and knight c3 are played more often. This does have a 100% score. Let's just see what the computer likes best. Hmm. No real consensus, I guess. The evaluation is pretty close with all these. 
But I kind of like d5 simply to prevent black from playing d5. And I did mention in game, you know, if we were to play this, it gives black a chance to establish the pawn in the middle. So I kind of prefer this, this bulldozer with the immediate d5. And now knight e5. Okay, so the, the idea I was mentioning, common tactic here is if there's a trade. Now, I know both sides are looking exposed here, but the onus is on black to defend because their knight is under attack. If black plays knight e7, this tactic happens in various forms in this line. You can play d6. And I wonder, it actually probably doesn't lose material here quite yet because black can play queen a5 check, which may just save the day by providing an escape square. But the crux of the idea is if black plays their knight somewhere, whether it's f5, g6, c6, whatever, you can play queen e2 check. And they're stuck on the e file, they have to block. And <laughs> they're going to lose a piece whether they block on e5 or e7. If e5, I guess they lose two pieces after you take. So do be aware of that in this line. Once you establish that pawn duo, I guarantee some of you guys will be using this idea. So my opponent played knight e5. And I just developed, let's just see. I like this move, but I wonder at this point if there was anything better. Ah, interesting. d6 or queen d4 are ranking up there a little bit higher. This is already a pretty nice evaluation for white. Hmm. Wants me to go for this clamp immediately. That feels a bit premature with no development backing it. Now it's kind of changing its mind. f6, never play f6. But I guess the idea is here, perhaps, in some cases. Yeah, I don't like d6. d6 feels early to me. Queen d4 I might be able to get behind. Similar to what I did in the game. But okay, I played knight c3. Yeah, and bishop b4 felt a little loose. I wonder if my opponent had played knight f6, what I would want to do. Do I go f4 or d6 at this point? The engine says, go ahead, young lad. Play f4, followed by d6. Maybe e5 to come. We're getting a big clamp on the position, shutting down black's bishops in particular. Yeah, this looks pretty nice, actually, because with that pawn defended on d6 and the other pawn coming up to support, black's minor pieces are in a bad way here. Still got to be careful, though. But bishop e4, yeah, queen d4 just seemed like a nice reply, attacking both these points. Take. I think queen takes or b takes are fine. I took with the b pawn towards the center. Yeah, queen c7. Okay, now f4 or d6. Yeah, it actually does like d6 and then f4 a little bit better, which in hindsight makes sense because... Hmm, why is that... Hmm, I wonder why that's two, two points higher in the eval. So I played f4 in the game, and then I took here. And then black blundered the game at that point. What was I thinking, though? Ah, okay, so if the pawn's on d6, I guess it, it guards against knight e7. So maybe it's harder for black to coordinate? I guess that's what the engine is pointing out. So I, I know I'm running the engine, but I'm trying to be smart about this. I'm using it selectively. I'm trying to ask myself questions as I go. A lot of times you want to look through your games without looking at the engine at all first. Like if I were annotating this game, that's what I would do. That's probably the reason. So if I play d6 here, and it's an attractive move because it severs the coordination, but black will go here to defend the knight. Then I play f6. Let's say here takes, I'm still defending this guy long range. And there's no immediate threat even, but I guess it's just more awkward for black to, de to develop. They can't bring this knight out because we cover all these squares. And I guess they could play queen h5 maybe, but that looks <laughs> kind of desperate. Queen d8 is the best move here, apparently. Queen back to d8. What about this? <laughs> h4, okay. <laughs> don't know if I would have found h4, I got to admit. I don't see the point of that, but <laughs> I guess the idea is to take away that square and try to go bishop e2 on the next move? I don't know. Okay, yeah, the pawn on d6 does seem to have an effect, specifically guarding that e7 square. But instead, this was still pretty good. f4, queen takes g7. 
And black needs some sort of play. I, I thought e5 might be the best try in the game. Because that blocks my queen from defending c3. And I can't take the rook yet. It's defended always. So I was probably going to play something like bishop d2. I guess c4 or even knight e2 is given. Let's say bishop d2 since that was my instinct. I thought this is what black should do. Get the pawn back. Although this still looks pretty nice for white. Black is somewhat frozen and... With the more open position, I like the bishops for white and my queen lurking real close to their king and also this rook. Yeah. But instead, my opponent played knight takes f4 and resigned before I could take the rook. All right. So a couple of interesting games. They they didn't last a, a, a really that long, but I think there are some extremely instructive points there. Thanks again to Yash for the games. I don't know this player at all. I just look on the seat graph for games and play people I think would be interesting. Uh, and rating ranges I think would be interesting. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Again, hope you're all doing well as we're getting into February here. And take care. I'll be back again soon with another video. All right, guys. Bye.